Again, you could play around on a five, three percent of the time, but once you find your niche, stay with your niche. Don't deviate because again, the lights are always the shiniest. The grass is always the greener until you get to the other person's backyard and you get attacked by three dozen Rottweilers. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for your time, uh, your viewership. We invite you to come aboard, subscribe, like, and share uh, the channel, and we can take this continuous uh, journey uh, into uh, promised land, right? Or whatever that promised land is. Uh, other than that, guys, hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. So nothing really on uh, the index front, right? Uh, you know, we've been on this massive uptrend for a long, long time. Uh, stocks are rallying. Stocks are then resting. There's rotation and so forth and so on. I, I want to start out with a little bit differently today, okay? So if you're on social media, this is usually like a social media thing, right? Because a lot of these terms I've, I've, uh, I've, you know, you started using as you, you're on social media and you hear it all the time, right? Wait for the A plus setup, right? That, that A plus setup, wait for it. If you, if you don't get the A plus setup, don't trade. There's no reason to trade. And sometimes you hear me use the, you know, like a phrase, you know, don't trade the two seven offsuit. So you can make a case that a plus setups are in the eyes of the beholder. I don't. I don't make that case. I think when a stock has a move, initial move, whether it's up or down, goes sideways, and then finally comes out of the range, that's what's called uh, a really big A plus program. And usually, you know, I, I, I talk about, you know, I talk about one, one of my secrets to longevity, especially in the last 12 out of the 14 years, I, I stopped pretty much trading everything, right? Um, I would say 95% of all my trades are probably the same, you know, 10 stocks, you know, same 10, 12 stocks, Apple, you know, Amazon, Meta, NVIDIA, Tesla, right? Stuff like that, Microsoft, stuff like that. And the other five, like if I see like option flow in a name, it's, conf you know, it's confirming, uh, it's confirming uh, its upper channel, I'll go into the trade. But, but with all that being said, I've always said this in the past. Um, the reason why I trade beta, number one, they're the biggest average true ranges uh, in the whole in the whole market, and I understand their tendencies, right? I understand how Tesla trades. I understand how uh, Meta and Apple trades, the difference between Amazon and NVIDIA, right? Every, everybody has a different personality. And I've always said that if you trade random stocks because you don't know their tendencies or their personalities, you're going to wind up being with getting random results. Let's fast forward to today, right? If you guys have been watching, uh, if you guys have been watching uh, this broadcast for the last, probably for the last two weeks, we've been talking about IMGN. And, and again, it's not make it or break it type of day today. Well, you know, there was actually some really, really good moves today. We'll get to the pivots. Ironically, this was an A plus setup, right? So basically what this was, was the stock gapped up. It went sideways for two weeks. It got rejected three times off 14. And you say to yourself, eventually, if it confirms 14, it should go, correct? So usually I wouldn't trade a stock like this, but today, you know, I've been watching this thing for two weeks. I say, you know what, let me, like, you know, it looks great, right? So I get along the stock, right? I get along the stock and here's kind of the, here, here's the point, right? So I get along the stock right here, right? The stock spikes up about 25, 30 cents, I don't know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, right? So I sell a little, I always sell a little, especially a $14 stock. I don't know, you know, I don't know what the big move is on a $14 stock. So I sell some, right? The stock comes back to 14. I figure, okay, it's going to come back to $14. It's going to pause there, right? Rest, you know, because a lot of times they'll back test into their breakout level and then explode that higher. Yeah, not so much, right? Not so much. Uh, <laughs> the stock went from 1430 all the way down the 13.30. I wound up you know, net net losing about 35 cents on the trade. It's not the point of losing the money. Like I sat there and I'm like, how, what happened just now? I, I, like, I understand it's a random stock. It's not usually a stock that I would trade, 
But what the hell happened here? And, and again, here's kind of really, really goes to the point of you can have the greatest setup in the world. And ironically, I led with this stock today at Morning Strategy, right? We didn't talk about Tesla. We talked about Tesla last. We'll get to everything in a second. I led with this thing. I said, listen, maybe today's finally the day. It held up Friday, yada, yada, yada. But it really is, it really does come down to two points, okay? An eight plus setup is the eye, is, is actually in the eyes of the beholder, okay? So I'm wrong, okay? And it really does hammer the point that if you do trade outside of your comfort zone, expect random results. That's the bottom line. And I've noticed that for years. When I trade Meta, when I trade Tesla, when I trade NVIDIA, I usually get some pretty good organic moves. As soon as I trade anything else, it's a, it's a, it's a toss up, right? Take the yeah, I have a dime, literally I have a dime in my, my right. Take a toss up, heads and tails. Maybe you make, maybe you lose. But again, it really does show you once you find your niche, guys. Again, you could play around on a five three percent of the time, but once you find your niche, stay with your niche. Don't deviate because again, the lights are always the shiniest. The grass is always the greener until you get to the other person's backyard and you get attacked by three dozen Rottweilers. Stay in your lane, son. Stay in your lane. Other than that, right, pretty seamless day. Uh, the one trade that I was fighting with, I know a lot of you guys were fighting with as well, was Tesla. We'll get to individual pivots in a second. The market did hold up very, very well today, right? Um, there was some news that they were coming close to a debt ceiling um, kind of agreement, as we talked about in the weekend video. In my experience in the last 24 years, every single time they've been talking about debt ceiling, debt ceiling, debt ceiling, it turned into a complete non-event, okay? They usually resolved it within a week or so. Does the government, can the government shut down three, four days? Like I said over the weekend, what are you, not going to get your mail? Is that your worst problem? You're not going to be able to buy a stamp at the post office? Let that be your worst problem. So I don't think this is a big deal. And I, and I think the market has spoken through years and years and years that this is not a big deal as, as well. When you look at uh, the total, the, the final tally today on all the indexes, again, nothing to write home about, but that's good. That's what you want. That's an organic market that you definitely want to trade. You had the Dow up 40 points, you had the S&P up 12, and you had NASDAQ up 80. And when you look at the members in those stocks, the leaders, the one that had the big runs and the earnings runs, they rested, right? So you had Microsoft continues to rest. But again, going sideways. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely watching Microsoft in the next couple of days. This is getting tighter, tighter, tighter. Again, you could turn around and say, well, Dan, it's making higher low, excuse me, lower highs in the last three days. Yeah, but it's still holding on. It's also making uh, lo uh, higher lows, right? So even though it's making lower highs, it's still making higher lows off the 10 day and the 10 day is super bullish. So if it could get above this channel here in the next couple of days, Microsoft's gonna wake up, but it's resting. Apple still continues, right? Still continues to kind of go sideways, had a great earnings run. It can't do anything else with it, right? It's just kind of going sideways. It's sitting and it's protecting the 10 day moving average, just like Microsoft, but again, no price improvement just yet. The stocks that had really big runs last week, Google, well-deserved rest, right? Well-deserved rest down a dollar. The stock has gone from literally in the last five days from 104 to 120. I think a dollar rest is, is very, very unnecessary for this thing. Uh, even Amazon, right, had a really, really great run. It's still price improved by a dollar today, still made a lower highs, but the point is, that their stocks, even if they're not having their biggest days, they're still organically price improving either the previous range or the previous week's range. So that's super duper important. The stocks that did wake up today, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Meta finally got above this whole range here. You guys remember we were talking, been talking about Meta for like a week? Well, when is it going to take another run? When is it going to take another run? Well, this is the highest close now in this little formation and it put in its highest close. So you got NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, same thing. NVIDIA has been weak, 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 strong, 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 weak, weak, weak. NVIDIA reclaimed the five-day moving average. Watch NVIDIA for the next day or so. Again, maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's the next day. But keep an eye on NVIDIA. If it starts getting above this candle here, which is the 511 highs, there's a shot it goes back to last week's highs. Keep an eye on that. AMD, kind of the same thing. AMD, got you had a massive, massive run, came in. The last couple of days has gotten rejected at exactly the same area. If AMD tomorrow reclaims back the five-day moving average, maybe this thing wakes up. So you have a lot of names that are super strong in the market. One stock that's not strong was Tesla, right? So tomorrow, apparently, they have some sort of um, investors meeting. I think it's tomorrow, 3 o'clock, east of Central Time. Who the hell knows what they're going to talk about? Uh, but we saw today a lot of really aggressive short-term uh, we saw today 160, 155, 150. 
near-term expiration puts. Uh, notably, one guy came in for 1.7, either 1.2 million or 1.7 million of the June 150 puts. Guys, watch Tesla. I traded Tesla today. It was a buyer in the crowd. It came in. It was literally a fist fight. For all you guys in the webinar, you kind of know this. We were fighting with this thing. It felt like for nine hours. It was only like two. Uh, but we were fighting with this thing an hour. It finally came in like a dollar and a half. Uh, this is, it finally closed below the 10 day moving average. The key now to Tesla going into tomorrow ahead of its uh, investors meeting is can they finally get below this candle here, right? That's the key. Can it get below uh, the beginning of May? If it starts building below this channel here, then you have a lot of room potential. Is it going to do so? We don't know, but we always talk about on every single video, don't we at least need to be prepared for it? And that's the name of the game. Always be prepared for both sides of the market. So going into tomorrow, again, continuation tech looks really, really good. Uh, the AI names, like AI, uh, woke up today really aggressively, uh, reclaimed back the 50-day moving average on a lot of volume. That's a good thing. Look at this volume expansion here today on, on AI, massive. Keep an eye on this thing tomorrow. Either a 60-minute dip, right? If it, if it opens up weak, there's profit takers at the open into rising 60-minute support, red to green or above uh, today's range looks really, really good. So let's talk about uh, some pivots from today. Again, ironically, the stock that had the best setup, IMGN, didn't work. Again, best setups, A-plus setups, are on the eye of the beholder. So let's talk about it, right? So too low, uh, lost earnings low, needs to confirm, never got there. IMGN, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I bought it at 14, went to 14.30, yada, yada, yada. I wound up losing 35 cents. Hey, to each his own, right? I'm not... I'm not judging. Uh, lazy boy, uh, not lazy boy. Uh, Legal Zoom we talked about on the weekend update. Uh, 1075 needs to build. Uh, so here is Lazy Boy, right? It got above the 1075. It just couldn't make it there. Still, I still like this thing, but it really needs to continue. It still needs to continue build above today's channels. Uh, Hasbro, right? We talked about this on the weekend update. 6135 needs to build here was hasbro right beautiful move right beautiful beautiful move it took out the 6135 i uh, trained all the way up to 62 66 beautiful move still that looks like it wants to get into the 63s uh meta finally got above their uh broke this downtrend today 38 uh, 21 uh needs to build here was meta right so here was the 38 21 this whole channel here right you see this whole channel here it got above 3 38 21 got up it got into the 240s looks good if it could confirm today's channel tomorrow uh there should be more upside uh amd never gave a second entry what a second ba entry basically means is if amd took out 9368 what happens is stops are being run right i think everybody knows that ter term uh, the only way you'll have natural sellers come in is if you see it snap back first. The second entry is basically through the low of the day after it took out the pivot. Obviously, never gave a second entry. On uh, NVIDIA, woke up today, right? Woke up today, uh, 8780 uh, needs to build, right? So here is NVIDIA. So it took out this 8780, would happen to be also the five-day moving average. It got above there, closed, went all the way up to almost 290. This thing looks really good. Again, if you could reclaim the five-day of the channel from two days ago. I think there's a shot uh, at last week's highs. And last but not least, right, Tesla. So again, so I shorted Tesla through the 66 level, right? It, was, it put in a five-day range. So I shorted Tesla through 66. It went down initially to around a buck. Then buyers swooped in, right? There was like a, a, a killer war. It was, like the, it was like the end of the world war at 66. They finally, you know, it finally died. It went to like 64, well, it didn't die. It went to like 64 and change. Covered some more, right? Covered some more, and they swept it right back to 66. The buyer was there all day. I don't know who the buyer was. Don't care. Elon, Kathy, Elon's, you know, dog. Who the hell knows? Somebody was buying today. Maybe a hedge fund, whatever it was. Somebody was buying the stock. Moral of the story is, towards the end of the day, they sold it off, and they closed it right under the 10-day moving average. The key to Tesla tomorrow is, if it starts losing today's range, but more important, if it starts losing this candle right over here, this will confirm this whole channel. And if it does, look how much room you have to the downside. And if you combine that, if we get more deep out of the money put buyers to come in, we could really, really get uh, some pretty decent value going into tomorrow's channel. So let me give you guys a couple of names uh, to watch for tomorrow. Um, I like this, you know, let me give you guys some non-beta names. 
switch it up a little bit. Uh, look at DVAX, right? I don't know what this thing is, but it looks pretty good. It's coming out of this whole channel here. First close over daily supply. You got some decent volume coming in. Uh, if DVAX starts reclaiming, uh, you know, reclaiming this this range here, the supply zone, I think this thing could move. Uh, ACVA, uh, again, here's a perfect example of a stock. Had a big move, rested. Today's a second day play. If it could reclaim back today's channel, I think there's more room uh, to the upside. Uh, AI we talked about. I, I like AI either on dips or uh, either a dips on a red to green potential move there. And, uh, you, know, keep, you know, keep an eye on everything else we just talked about. You know, Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, uh, obviously Tesla, Meta. I mean, look, if, 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 if there is a true rotation in technology names and some stocks are going to always rest and money flows and going to those, those other names, well, those other names are Microsoft potentially could wake up. Uh, NVIDIA could potentially reclaim the five day. And you got AMD waking up on the heels of the video as well. So guys, have a great night, everybody. If you are joining us tomorrow uh, at the live webinar or on the live broadcast, uh, morning strategy starts up about 10 minutes after nine. Uh, come there, ask me questions. Again, if you're not asking questions, you're wasting my time. You're wasting your time. It's not about the alert. That, you know, cut that social media garbage out of your vocabulary. It's all about understanding technical analysis and your points of reference when context starts to confirm. Guys, God bless you, everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.